the Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com. All right, welcome back to the Sports Renegades here on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stupperich. I'm Ryan Risky. And, yeah, we talked about in our first segment the Final Four and talking about the teams that are set and then a very strange article that came out today about uh, South Carolina receiving an errant text saying that they had made the tournament when, in fact, they did not. And I don't know why it's coming out, like, two weeks later, but it is. Um, And now we're going to talk about the NBA team in Chicago, the Chicago Bulls, as they are... 500 right now 37 and 37 and they actually um i think when they fell under 500 which was their game before their last win uh they were 36 and 37 they hadn't been under 500 since february 2014 so that is just uh, unbelievable it's been it's been embarrassingly bad i mean you lose by 22 to the magic while the magic are missing their three best players yeah I mean, and as you said, not that you know, back in the beginning of January, they were the number two seed in the they Eastern Conference. They were number Conference, two seed when I three fallen all the way I, to number nine. I, I went on New Year's Day against the Knicks. They were the number two seed, only back a few games by Cleveland. And you know, we thought, oh, it's going to be a race for first or second. Doesn't really matter where the Bulls fall because they should be in the Eastern Conference Finals. And then in the and then in late January, they started to slide. And you're like, oh, they can still come back. February, they still have time. Even beginning of March, they still have time to turn this around and maybe have a five or six seed, possibly home court with a four. And then now it's like nobody's giving them a chance, and rightfully so, because it's it's just been awful. I think ESPN has them at like an 18% chance to make the playoffs now. Yeah, well, the the problem is Detroit got good, and they got good pretty fast. I, I think after the trade deadline, they, they really started to turn things around. Andre Drummond's a really good player. And uh, they they got Reggie Jackson last year from Oklahoma City. He's their starting he's point been, guard. He's been been starring. Uh, yeah, he's Caldwell been really good. Pope has been pretty good. Right. Uh, you know, they, they've been pretty good. And they, they traded for Tobias Harris, I think. And Tobias Harris is on their team. He's a pretty good player. Um, yeah, they, they've been doing a nice job. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the, the credit has to go to Stan Van Gundy. Uh, he's been a pretty good coach, but he's sort of taken over everything there in Detroit, and he's done a pretty nice job. I think they're 40 and 35. I don't think anyone would think they'd be five games over 500 and like a seventh seed right. in the playoffs. I'm right kind of surprised it took Stan Van Gundy as long as it did to get him another head coaching job because he was he was a great coach with Orlando, and he got fired because Dwight Howard started complaining to management about him. Right. He yeah. I mean, he brought them to the finals, and they they lost to the Lakers, and you know they did a pretty nice job. They beat the Cavaliers. You know. They, they beat LeBron James with his first stint in Cleveland. And, uh, yeah, they, they did a nice job. But Dwight Howard kind of ruined that for everybody in Orlando, didn't he? And, and <laughs> for, like, no reason also. Right. It, it was like, They you, had you a know, great team with Jameer Nelson, J.J. You know, Turkaloo was good then, it, which was crazy. But, uh, yeah, he, he was still good. And, they yeah, they had a pretty good team. Uh, but they, they couldn't get it done. Um, yeah, but now the Bulls are playing Houston tonight. And, uh Ryan was looking at the the schedule during the the rest of the season. Uh, you know, they're, they're not playing that hard of teams coming up, but uh, they're they're teams uh, that they can easily lose to. Yeah, yeah. They're well, you know, anything. I, I guess they could lose to anybody now uh, when you look at it. I, except as we said, they're in a good. If they can, you know, win a bunch of games, you know, and then they are forced in a winner. A win, win uh, the final game of the season to get in. They play Philadelphia, right? They they play Philadelphia at home, the last uh, game of the season. Uh, coming up after this Houston game, which by the way they're losing thirteen to eight, five forty seven left in the first quarter. And they have to win this game. Um, they're going to be playing the Pistons at home. Then they travel to Milwaukee. That'll be interesting. Um, Milwaukee almost has as many wins as the Bulls. They only have uh, six more. Uh, the The Bulls have six more wins than Milwaukee. That's a game the Bulls need to win as well. Yes. Then they uh, travel to to Memphis. Travel to Miami. They always lose in Miami. Uh, then they're home against the Cavaliers. That'll be uh, Miami something. has been really good this year. I mean, they've yep. been really good. Although I don't know if you saw yesterday, they had lost in overtime to the Lakers at the Staples Center, which is kind of embarrassing, but. Um, especially when Kobe didn't play after the first quarter. I guess he was all bruised up and icing his uh, his legs and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, they, they play the Cavs, and then they travel to New Orleans to play the uh, no Anthony Davis New Orleans Pelicans, and then uh, they're home against the 76ers. I mean, realistically, 
they could all, they could win four of those games. I mean, they might yeah I mean, if they turn Mi- it around. I mean, I can lose to Miami and Cleveland, which is probably expected. I mean, they could win those other games: New Orleans, Philadelphia. They need to win tonight. They can beat the Bucks. I mean, I don't know if four and two will be good enough to get them into the playoffs. They do have to beat Detroit on Saturday, though. I mean, that's like a must. Oh yeah, win to get in because that. <laughs> Because then I'm pretty sure Detroit will have the tiebreaker over them. Uh, Looking at the Eastern Conference standings right now, the Bulls are two games out of the playoffs. Indiana uh, has a two-game lead over them. And we can take a look at Indiana's schedule, too, see if that's any tougher than the Bulls or or easier than the Bulls. Uh, They play Philadelphia. You can pencil in a win there, probably. Then they play the Knicks. They play the Cavs. They play the Raptors. They play the Nets. They play the Knicks. They play the Bucks. So their schedule looks a little easier. Their schedule looks like they might only lose two of those games to Toronto and Cleveland. So if you're looking at that, if you're just going by, you know, uh, which team is better? The the Bulls won't make the playoffs, and Indiana would stay in as the eighth seed. Um, I mean, I, really? So the, I, I don't yeah. know. If the Bulls miss the playoffs, I don't know how you don't make any changes because, this, I mean, th- this is just bad. They literally just free fell. It would be the first time since 07-08 that they did not make the playoffs, and that team was pre-Rose. So, you know, that that was a year before Rose came to the team. Um, so that just shows you how, you know, bad that team was. And, uh it, it's it's very embarrassing. I, I mean, how do you lose with the team that you have? I mean, the the roster. I, I mean, if you, if you look at the roster when healthy, that team should be like we said, two or three in the East, and it's not. And right, I and mean, it's because there's so much dysfunction. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot. Yeah, there is a lot. And and there's a lot of injury problems, and you know all the the timetables are are wrong for when the players are coming back, and that can be attributed to the medical staff, which has been bad for like ten years. So. Because the Bulls don't want to make changes to improve the team. No, no, no changes. You know, it, it took them, you know, I I mean, we know that Tom Thibodeau did not, uh, you know, agree with what Gar and Pax were doing, and they didn't agree with with what Tom Thibodeau was doing. But, um, you know, so they made that change and got Fred Hoiberg, someone who will listen to them. But, you know, just because he listens to them doesn't mean the team is listening to, the, to him. And, you know, I, I feel like they don't respect Fred Hoiberg. And there's really no reason to respect him right now. He just hasn't done anything that great. And the players are all hurt, and, you know, that doesn't help yeah. either. And now there's rumors that Jimmy Butler might be traded. Yeah, and... well, you know, I would take offers, it, it, you know, because if you're doing that, then you're just going for a major rebuild right now. Right, and, I mean, throwing the fact that your superstar player seems to have dysfunction with his coach. Right, yeah. So, And, of course, Derrick Rose will only be with the team one more season. Uh, Pal Gasol will probably be gone. Joe Kim Noah will, probably... will for sure be gone. It well, sounds like. I, I I don't know. Remember, Gar Foreman said he wants to re-sign Noah because <laughs> he views him That's as right. part he of the That's right. He did core. say that. He did. He yeah. I, so I can't I believe know. he said that. But yeah, he did say that. Uh, and he said Pal Gasol is part of the future of winning too, even though he's like 37, 36. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, we're going to do an update right now. We'll come back and we'll wrap this uh, Bulls discussion up before John Arguello calls in to talk about the Cubs. Welcome back to uh, the Sports Renegades on SportstownChicago.com. And, uh, yeah, we were talking about the Bulls and the NBA uh, as well. Um, by the way, the Warriors are, I mean, there's no stopping them. They're, they're going to break the Bulls' record in case there was any doubt. Yeah, <laughs> you thought you needed to beat them last night and then, they they do play the Spurs two more times, except then you, you already know that Greg Popovich is going to be resting his starters in those right. games. Right. Well, not just that. Even if they lose those games, they'd only have nine losses if they if, if they won all the rest of them. Their upcoming schedule, they play the Celtics, they play the Trailblazers, they play the Timberwolves, they play the Spurs. The Celtics have given them a hard time this year, though. They they have, but this game is in San Francisco, so I, <laughs> I, I think... Uh, I think the Warriors will prevail. You know, they, they haven't lost a regular season home game since the Bulls beat them last season there in overtime. So yeah, that it is. And Rose hit that clutch shot at the end. He he did. He did. Um, uh, so, the, yeah, Spurs, Grizzlies, and they play Spurs again, and then the Grizzlies again. That's strange. Spurs, Grizzlies, Spurs, Grizzlies. That's a weird way to end the season. But, uh, yeah, that's the way they're going. They're 66. Seven, yeah. Oh no, sorry. They're sixty-eight and seventy, so they're two games from from the uh, you know seventy win mark, which teams can barely make anyway. Um, and then San Antonio has twelve losses too. So 
I think you can, you know, unless Oklahoma City does something, because I don't think the Clippers will. But, you know, unless Oklahoma City figures it out in the playoffs where, you know, it looks like they can beat somebody like San Antonio, you know, the Western Conference Finals is going to be Golden State and San Antonio. Like, you can already pencil that in. And for the Eastern Conference Finals, you know the Cavs will make it there some way, somehow, even though they have dysfunction as well. But they're going to make it there. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of what their opponent would be. Is it going to be Toronto? Is it going to be Atlanta? Could it be Boston? Could it be Miami? Those are probably the, the teams in contention for it. I, I would say Toronto's the best out of all those teams. But Toronto always has playoff troubles, so we'll see. We'll see how they, they do. They do, except that they're a really good team this year. I mean, they're, they're really playing very good basketball. Yep, yeah, they are. Um, let's see, what the, the, the Bulls score is 19-19 right now with 149 left in the first quarter. Uh, and let's check the NIT championship game. Valparaiso is down 24-19 to George Washington, 555 left in the first half. So we'll uh, t- check on those later on in the show. We'll check on those scores and let you know if the Bulls... Uh, you know, I'll be down by 15 next time we look, which is possible. Uh, but coming up next, we're going to be talking Cubs baseball, talking about everything that happened in spring training. Uh, we'll ask John who he thinks the MVP of the spring training was, and we'll ask him more uh, all about the Cubs coming up next on the Sports Renegades, sportstownchicago.com. The Sports Renegades podcast on sportstownchicago.com.